Welcome back to Garage Science. In this video, I'll be showing you how to easily and safely make nickel sulfate crystal from nickel metal. This nickel sulfate can then be used in various experiments to include nickel electroplating. The ingredients for creating the solution can be purchased from almost any auto parts store and convenience store. I've provided the links to purchase all these items in the video description. I'll be using nickel metal strip made for creating rechargeable battery packs. This nickel strip is usually tack welded to join rechargeable batteries together to create battery packs. It's also 99.6% nickel, so it's very well suited for this project since pure nickel is actually a little hard to come by at a reasonable price. I will also be using concentrated sulfuric acid in the form of battery acid. A typical concentration of battery acid is about 4 moles per liter of sulfuric acid. This acid will be the source of sulfate for the nickel sulfate crystals. The last ingredient is what makes this whole experiment a lot more safe, and that ingredient is hydrogen peroxide. The hydrogen peroxide I used was 3% by weight, but if you can get it in higher concentrations, that's better. I'll explain why later. You'll also need a glass jar or beaker to mix everything in. The solution will get fairly hot during the reaction, and you don't want to take the chance that a plastic container could possibly melt. Alright, so those are the ingredients. Next, what you need to understand is the reaction that will take place, because you really only need battery acid to dissolve nickel and create nickel sulfate. That reaction is shown here. There are no additional reactants required. There is, however, a requirement that heat be used to cause the reaction to take place. The reaction also generates heat as well, and the result is that there could be a pretty vicious reaction that takes place. And the reason that's a concern is that the words vicious and battery acid should generally not be used to describe any kind of home chemistry experiment. Additionally, the reaction also produces hydrogen gas, which also, as a general rule, should not be exposed to large amounts of heat. So then, an additional reaction needs to take place prior to the battery acid reacting with the nickel. That is the reaction provided by the hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide oxidizes the nickel with this reaction. The oxidized nickel then reacts with the sulfuric acid and follows this reaction. The two hydrogens in the sulfuric acid combine with the oxygen to create water as well as nickel and sulfate ions in solution. Now for this reaction you're going to need at least about a 3 to 1 ratio of hydrogen peroxide to battery acid. And in general a little bit extra hydrogen peroxide is good to ensure there is enough to react with all the battery acid. Then any excess hydrogen peroxide will naturally decompose due to its inherent instability. And on that note. Make sure the hydrogen peroxide you get is just hydrogen peroxide and water. Higher concentrations of hydrogen peroxide may contain additional ingredients to stabilize the peroxide and prevent it from naturally decomposing into water and oxygen gas. I tried using a higher concentration of hydrogen peroxide and these stabilizing ingredients appeared to all but completely prevent the reaction from taking place. So make sure you use pure solutions of hydrogen peroxide. Antiseptic or topical grade hydrogen peroxide should work just fine and can be purchased in 3% by weight solutions. To create my nickel sulfate crystals, I used 300 milliliters of 3% by weight hydrogen peroxide and 85 milliliters of battery acid. I then added about 12 grams of nickel, which turned out to be about 9 feet of nickel, or 18 6 inch strips. The reaction will take a few minutes to get going, likely because of the oxidation that has to occur first. Once the reaction starts picking up momentum, the solution will start to get hot, which is good because the heat will increase the rate of the reaction. Just be a little cautious because it will get to over 140 degrees Fahrenheit. So make sure your container is in a place where it won't get disturbed and won't be at risk of being spilled. The bulk of the reaction will occur in about an hour. After that, the solution will cool off and the reaction will slow down. It will take about 12 to 18 hours for the remainder of the reaction to take place. So be patient and periodically invert the container to provide some mixing. Once the entire reaction has taken place, you can either dilute it for use in nickel plating or do what I did and make some really cool looking nickel sulfate crystals. The solution as it is has a nickel sulfate concentration of about 0.5 moles per liter. So depending on the goal nickel sulfate concentration you want, you may already have the right concentration. Now to create the nickel sulfate crystals you have to get rid of the excess water. There are a couple of ways to do that which all center around evaporating the water. 
You could simply heat the container of nickel sulfate over the stove, preferably with it in a pot of water to prevent breaking the container. I did try and speed this process up by hooking the container up to a vacuum chamber and lowering the boiling point of the nickel sulfate. This was a little cumbersome and was more work than it was worth. By far the easiest way to evaporate the excess water is to use an aquarium heater to elevate the temperature of water in a bucket and place the bottle of nickel sulfate in the bucket. I also used a small submersible pump to continually circulate the water in the bucket as well. It will take about a week to evaporate enough water to cause the formation of nickel sulfate crystals. As you can see, with this much water that needs to be evaporated, it does help if you can start off with a higher concentration of hydrogen peroxide that will minimize the amount of water that eventually has to be evaporated. So this is the result. I refilled the mason jar with additional dilute nickel sulfate solution as water was evaporated. The final concentration of nickel was so high that the solution looked almost black. I poured the excess solution into another jar to review the nickel sulfate crystals that had formed on the bottom of the jar. You can see that there are large and small crystals. The larger crystals formed slowly over time as the mason jar was in the heating bucket and the concentration was slowly increased. The smaller crystals formed quickly after I removed the mason jar from the heating bucket and placed it in my refrigerator. Now what's the purpose of this experiment since you can just buy nickel sulfate crystals? Well it turns out you can perform this experiment for about 15-40% to 40 of what it would cost for the same amount of nickel sulfate, of course depending on how much you purchased. Obviously, when a larger amount is purchased, the price goes down. And unless you're in a laboratory and environment, then the purity of these homemade nickel sulfate crystals is high enough for most projects. I try and produce worthwhile content as much as possible, but my free time is limited, so your input helps me focus my efforts. Please let me know what you thought in the comments, and remember to hit the like button, share with your friends, and subscribe to this channel. That's all I got. Thanks for watching.